G'day guys, Calvin, Cartoon in New Zealand. Today I'm looking at why this UCF10 LS400 is losing a bit of past air fluid. The pump was rebuilt uh, a couple of years ago. Alternator was replaced at the same time. The rack was built, was rebuilt last time I saw the car, so we pulled that apart. And that was uh, 2018. The past air rack was rebuilt. And it's been really, really good. But just recently, it dropped the fluid a little bit. So I've checked the pump, I've checked the rack, I've checked the lines. The, the high pressure line has got like a little bit of dust. Like there might be some weepage. But I've cleaned that off and we're going to monitor that one. But I'm going to change the past the idle up valve. A little valve like that. And there is the part number for it. These valves are cheap. Okay. Now you can pull them apart, put a couple of O-rings in. And I always prefer to leave them in the system. Toyota and Lexus put them there for a reason. And they're one of the things that make the cars nice. If I'm doing a conversion and I'm lacking space and it's a manual, I might not. Especially if I'm running an aftermarket computer. But an auto on a standard computer, I pretty much always try to run them whether it's a standard car or whether it's an engine swap. So it's located uh, there on the power steer pump. That is a Sora one, okay? It's a Sora pump. And they are located actually on a banjo fitting on the high pressure line on the Sora pumps. Has Old Yellow got a pump on it? Old Yellow doesn't have a pump. Uh, we'll use Joey here. So this is where they're normally located. So this one, as you can see, is actually just an idler now. It's just a dummy pump. There's no fluid or anything in it. It's got a bit of grease to keep the bearing happy. That one's been blanked. And on, and on the VVTi, well, clearly a VVTi pump, there's where it fits there. That same drilling that's on the Sora one that's not actually drilled out. So there's the valve. There's the plunger with the O-rings that can be replaced. So how does it work? Fluid, pressure's on the plunger, that one there. So high pressure fluid there. Pressure's on the plunger, hence it's got the seals coming up through this unit here. And then there's the little valve, which is actually located in here. So it pushes this little fella here. It's actually sore on my fingers. Pushes on this fella. Allowing a bypass of air through here and down here and out the other tube. Very, very simple. The air supply is, here's your intake going into the engine. So it needs to be monitored by the airflow meter. Out of this little tube, so please be careful not to break that little tube off. Rubber goes down there, comes back up, and into the engine here. And into the engine there. You can see this one is split as well, so we're going to be replacing those hoses. And I'm just using a generic aftermarket quality hose, rubber hose. All right, let's get in. Let's get this valve changed. Get this car out of here. I'm removing this, I'm removing this. It's at the bottom of the pump. It's a little bit awkward to get to. So these are the rubber lines, hoses out of the vehicle. Uh, it doesn't actually matter which way round they go, but the, the back fitting on the valve goes to, to that one. So it doesn't matter, they, it'll work either way. See you later. 
I've got little hands, so it's, it's under here. And as you can see, I've, I've whipped the power steer pulley off to make it a little bit easier. I've disconnected the battery so we don't short out the alternator, which is under there. So the way these seal is on this taper. And I see so many guys putting thread sealant down here and a whole lot of other stuff. It seals there, so it doesn't need any sealant down here. For us, if we do blank them off, I put a big ball bearing in there. You do it up tight. It's not going to ever leak because it seals on the ball bearing. We're going to slip the new valve in. And I'm going to do it without spilling any oil. And if we slip this one apart, O-rings are completely flat. The other thing that happens is the, the, the nipples break off, or the whole body breaks off and then the plunger comes out. Easy to change. Not the most fun, but it's relatively easy to change. Right, I'm gonna put it back together, run some vacuum lines. I have a shorty spanner that does the job really nicely. And you just gotta kinda get a feel for where it is. It's gotta be good with your fingers and places you can't see. I'm using quarter inch vacuum hose. Uh, this thing's slightly thicker walled, so it does make it very tight for the factory hose clamp, which I am refitting. So I've got the backup of the zip ties if required. So I'm all done. Hope that's been helpful. Catch you again soon. What I didn't mention is this car has also been puffing a little bit of blue smoke every now and again, which is another hint that there may be some leakage of past air fluid through that idle up valve.